How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another Roblox tutorial. So before we get started, don't forget to subscribe if you enjoy this content and don't forget to leave a like if this helps you whatsoever. And don't forget to comment down below if you have any issues, maybe someone or me will help you out on those issues. And even better, don't forget to uh, join the Discord, the Spooks HD official Discord uh, down in the description down below. You don't wanna miss it. Best way to get in contact with me and the rest of the community. Without further ado, Let's go ahead and get started. So uh, if you haven't seen the actual video title, which is kind of hard to do when you clicked on this video, um, you know that we're working on a daily reward system. So if you've ever played Bloxburg or Jailbreak or even one of the older games, Mad Games, uh, you will know that uh, they all have reward systems. And this is a great way to bring players back daily so they can get the rewards. And they don't even have to be large rewards. They can be very small rewards. But players will still come back to get them so uh so let's go ahead and create a script and server script service and listen we're not going to name it or anything we'll keep it as script for the time being um and we're going to go ahead and create a variable called data store service and we're going to go ahead and do game get service and then we're going to go ahead and do data store service and then we're going to go ahead and do local data store is equal to uh, data store service uh, get data store and then we're going to just go ahead and do uh, player info and then from here we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, or we'll, we'll do player data for the time being um, and then from here we're going to go ahead and create a few uh, settings and there are going to be two settings that we're going to be using so we're going to do a uh, daily reward weight and this is uh so for right now we'll set it to 24 just for the example and this is going to be in hours so they have to wait a full day to get the reward and then um here what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create the reward itself which is going to be 20 coins um, so basically we're going to display the coins on the leaderboard. If they wait a specific amount of hours, then they get 20 coins and you can make this more modular and you can make it so they earn more for every day they join and continuing, but we're going to make this very simple. So now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and do game dot players dot player added and player added is an event, which is called when a player joins. And when we connect a, a function to it, we are given also a variable, which is the player. And we have the player object as a variable, which will set as P. So when a player joins, this function is called, and uh, primarily, um, yeah, so this function is called along with the player object, which we'll be using. So um, so how, what do we do? Well, first we're gonna have to create a leader stats uh, folder or model, depends on what you like. I personally like the folder a lot better. Um, We'll create a leader board. So when you join a game as a client and not as a server, you get a little GUI over here showing all the players. And if you create a leader stats object, you also get little uh, subsections for each of the names. So we're going to go ahead and do local leader stats. It's equal to instance dot new folder. So this is going to create a folder with a, a name just like this so we'll create a name with this as a string but what the problem with that is it's not to the correct name so we need it to be equal to leader stats for it to pop up and then we just need to parent it to the player uh which we have up here as the player object and then we need to go ahead and create our um uh to create our um int value or integer and basically this is going to be named um coins as well that's what it's going to pop up as and we're going to just go ahead and parent that to leader stats now let's go ahead and really quickly cover because there's two values you might be like spooks what about number value isn't that also another value and it is um but typically when you have a currency system uh in video games you never really go into the decimals to make it simple you or you typically are always in integers or whole numbers so you can make this a number value, but to keep it short, we'll like to keep it an int value. So, um, so we'll go ahead and do uh, create leader stats and values. And then here, oh, whoops, I accidentally got rid of that. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and go down here and we're going to do uh, get data and do data checks. 
So um, basically what we're going to go here is user data is going to be a variable. Now you might now you might be saying, well, Spooks, why don't we just go ahead and set it now? Um, the reason why is because when we try to get data from a data store, there's a very there's a chance that um, it could error. And when a thing and uh, when code errors, it will halt the rest of the code below it. So we're going to go ahead and do if user data is um or not if user data my bad uh we're gonna go ahead and call p call fun or we're not called p call but uh well we're gonna call we're gonna call p call which basically wraps whatever is in it um in an environment where if an error occurs it doesn't halt like so if we were to put print here and we're like to do print high uh if you if something errored here like if we were to do um I don't know what errors. Um, well, if we were to just call error right here, that, honestly, that errors. Um, if we were to call error here, it would not stop this from printing. But if we were to get rid of this, um, error would stop this from printing. So that's just the overall basis of what pcall does. So um, basically, user data, we're going to create a user data. We're going to set user data to a data store, get a sync. And instead of using the player's username, we're going to be using a... Uh, a state that doesn't change which is their user id and that since that never changes we don't have to worry about their name changing and this used to be a common practice a long time ago uh until we realized hey we can use this and we don't have to have these problems so now if the user data does exist so uh, basically this is how you can view it let's say you have four doors with different user ids and uh, let's say you have a fifth player that joins a brand new player and his user id isn't a door well you have his user id as a key but when you try to go find the door it doesn't exist so it errors but then but here's the thing behind those doors are little pieces of paper with information on it if that door does exist with that key, the player user ID, and you put it in, you get access to that information and that returns it. And so that's how we know if the if the player just joined or if it didn't join. Um, so we're going to do an else statement here. And basically, this is going to be our format. So let's go ahead and do a table format. And basically, it's going to be like this. Coins or... Uh, coins is equal to zero this is when they first join so they have zero coins and um join time is equal to um or we'll do uh reward time is equal to some random amount of seconds or not random but uh, some orderly amount of seconds so basically um we'll be using this as a format and right now we're going to be going over that so we're going to do data store set a sync and we're going to go ahead and use the user ID as the key. And then we're going to go ahead and create a table. And this is going to be the data that we're setting to that user ID, the data behind that door. So we're going to go ahead and set coins equal to zero like we have up here. But reward time is not going to be equal to that number, but it's going to be equal to os.time. Now you might be asking, well, Spooks, what is os.time? Well, os.time is actually the amount of seconds since 1970, January 1st um the first the last epoch and um basically we're going to be using this uh in this area that this part of the if statement um so that it works overall um by the way you might be noticing i'm in dark theme i'll be making a uh a very small very short tutorial on how to enable it um very soon so anyways, let's go ahead and continue. So now that we set um, the data here, we're going to go ahead and continue and we're going to go ahead and put this in user data and uh, we're going to go ahead and say, okay, so if user data dot reward time, and then we're going to put that inside uh, some parentheses and we're going to do OS dot time minus user data dot reward time. So we get the amount of seconds between now and when we last set it. So if we set it five seconds ago, then the current time minus that time will be five seconds. Um, so basically, we're going to say, okay, so if the time between these two dates or these two uh, amount of seconds 
um, is divided by 3,600, which you can view it as, okay, there's 60 seconds in a minute and there's 60 minutes in an hour. So 60 times 60 or 60 squared is 3,600. So now we have the amount of hours. So then if it's greater than our variable here, the daily reward weight, um, then we'll go ahead and say, okay, so we're gonna do user data is equal to another array or another table, not, not array, sorry. Um, so coins is equal to user data dot coins plus reward because we're giving that, them that reward. And then reward time is going to be reset to this time. Now what we're going to do is now we're going to set this as well. So um, underneath here, of course, we're going to go ahead and do coins dot value is equal to user data dot coins, um, which basically is going to display it, right? And then in user data, we're gonna go ahead and um, we're gonna go ahead and set that. So we're gonna go ahead and copy this, remove that, and then user data. So now we're setting the same data again, but instead um, we're giving it with the new coins, the additional. So I'm gonna change this to um, 0 0.01, which is going to be uh, one minute, of course. So yeah, this is one minute. Uh, 0 0.01 so we're going to wait one minute and i'll come back to you guys then but really quickly to prove that it's that amount of time we're going to go ahead and do print um i don't know well, uh, we're going to copy this right here and this will give us the amount of seconds be seconds between so we're going to print that and i'll come back a really quick jump cut and uh, i'll show you guys the results uh, but before we do that let's go ahead and press play and I'll show you that um, right now you have zero coins and now I'm going to go ahead and jump cut to that. So I'll see you guys there. Hello everyone. Uh, so we're back. And as you can see, we got a, uh, we gained 20 coins and um, I actually happily got exactly 60 seconds on the spot. So um, as you remember, we went ahead and printed the amount of times since the last saved and we ended up getting exactly 60. So uh, if it's even so if you joined exactly or after, you will still get your reward of 20 coins, which is pretty fantastic. So, um, yeah, so that's practically the entire tutorial. So if we go ahead and press play again, it's not going to give us like 40. So it's going to stay as 20 because we because um when it last saved, it hasn't been that many. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this and practically that's the entire tutorial right there is just this and only less than 40 lines of code you can make a very simple um, and removing spaces as well, removing this, it could be less than probably 35. So yeah, out of this, it's a very simple, um, very, very simple uh, daily reward system. So anyways, um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, oh, it's actually already been over a minute since uh, that. So that's pretty neat. So uh, as you can see, it works again after a minute. So anyways, uh, so that's about it. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, like I said in the beginning, if you enjoy this content and you want to see more, go ahead and subscribe. And don't forget to hit that little bell icon to get notified when I stream or when I uh, go ahead and release a new tutorial or a technical video. Um, don't forget to like if this helped you. And if you have any issues, I recommend not going in the comments, but instead going to the Spooks HD official Discord and going there and getting help because there's a dedicated help section for that with for your issues anyways so that's about it so don't forget to subscribe like and comment join that discord and i'll see you guys next time bye bye <laughs>